Hello Galaxy, I'm Chris Perillo, and today is the six-year anniversary of the death of Steve Jobs, which is giving me pause. I didn't even know that today was the day. I wore this shirt when six years ago I was with many of you, live streaming from this very position, talking about my memories of Steve Jobs. I actually met Steve Jobs once, very briefly, when I bought my first iMac, mine. That was years ago. It was a very brief encounter. It was at the Palo Alto store. He was in the back uh, talking with somebody about books. And I worked up enough nerve to approach him and introduce myself very briefly. He seemed to be in a good mood, which was a good sign. I said, hi, I'm Chris Perillo. I host Call for Help on Tech TV. And he shook my hand vigorously and said, awesome, buy the iMac with the SuperDrive. <laughs> that was my only interaction with him. And I'm grateful for that because other people have not had such positive experiences uh, with uh, Steve Jobs. And I watched some of the video that I recorded live six years ago. Uh, reading your comments as we went along and uh, seemingly having to remind the audience that we were talking about the fresh uh, passing of an icon. And his legacy was yet to be known. I do remember stating that Apple would be fine if they stayed true to their ethos, if they stayed true to the idea that they were creating a compelling experience, if their design always mattered. And here we are six years later, and I don't know who Apple is anymore. I don't know what they are anymore. I, I can't see them the same way. I wasn't even going to talk about this outright, but one of my allies, who also happens to be a patron, a longstanding supporter, Corey Moore, uh, tweeted this quote that I did retweet. This is a, a quote directly from Steve Jobs. Most people make the mistake of thinking design is what it looks like. People think it's this veneer, that the designers are handed this box and told, make it look good. That's not what we think design is. It's not just what it looks like and feels like. Design is how it works. You could go back and watch any number of old Steve Jobs videos. And they are not exactly prophetic unless he's relating his experiences with other companies and what makes Apple different. They're telling, if anything. Apple's lost its way. It lost its way when we lost Steve Jobs the first time at Apple. And I will tell you up front, I wasn't necessarily someone who was interested in what Apple had to offer when that was going on. It really wasn't until years later, with, of course, Steve Jobs at the helm, that I became fascinated with what they were doing. So I know that there are many of you who feel the same way I do, and there are many of you who don't. And when I sit here and type a message back to somebody on my iPad, I recognize that I may not be using it indefinitely. If you did not watch Google's announcements at all, their keynote presentation, um, you may have missed my commentary underneath it. I may recommend you watch it, maybe in line with what Google broadcast. You watch them both simultaneously. I can't rebroadcast. I don't have the rights. Google has out-appled Apple. Something else that I tweeted not long after the announcement. Saying during that particular broadcast that... Um, I'm willing to sell my iPad if a Pixelbook provides a better experience. Because it seems that Google has gone back and watched all those old Steve Jobs videos. It's not to say Apple is necessarily failing. It's, it's, it's not to say that Apple's, you know, uh, uh, doing the wrong thing, in their estimation. But from where I sit, and where I still sit, with this same shirt that... Luckily, still fits. I don't recognize Apple. And 
with every fiber of my being, I feel that most other pundits, so-called techies, tech reviewers, people who call themselves tech enthusiasts, they also miss the mark. Not all of them. But this, this is never more clear than when you go to watch a range of reviews about any particular product that you may be interested in, whether it happens to be an Apple product or something else. All they do, 99% of the time through 99% of the video, is regurgitate specs. They tell you what the device looks like. They say, here, this is the feature. They insult your intelligence. They insult my intelligence. We can read. We can see. We can listen. If they were doing their job as a so-called reviewer, as a so-called pundit, as a so-called expert, they would tell you about the experience. They would tell you that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. But no. Instead, we get to hear them tow the company line, whatever that company happens to be. They waste your time. They certainly waste mine, and it's maddening. If anything that keeps me moving forward is knowing that I'm going to talk about things the way that nobody else seems to be talking about them on a regular basis. But I was doing this years ago as well. Steve got it. And that's why I understood Steve and why I appreciated Apple. And here I am, ready to let it go. Huh. For the second time in the past few days, this iPhone 8 Plus, while recording video, decided to stop itself. And so I started it up again to continue telling you that I'm going to begin to remove Apple from certain parts of my life. Not entirely, not outright, just eventually I will not be living in the Apple ecosystem. This is a day or a, a time that I hoped would never come. And I know a lot of people feel the same way that I do. Some people don't. Some people are fine with the temperature of the water. But for me, it's getting a little too warm. I do believe that there are certain changes happening in the industry, uh, conditions that really weren't met years ago. I'm seeing this time right now as a time that I hoped would never come. But there's not much that I can do about it to control the outcome of this company's direction. It's their choice. So I can only react. They are free to make their choices. You are free to make your own choices. Certainly what I say may not apply to you and probably doesn't. But sitting here, six years to the day of Steve Jobs' death, and it feels that Apple died with Steve. It has the same name. People still buy iPhones and iPads and Macs and everything that Apple produces. But it's only same in name. In direction? Couldn't tell you. Because honestly, I, I don't know. I've speculated. I've potentially come close to the truth, but may never know. Hindsight is always twenty twenty. Well, I know where I was six years ago. I know how I felt six years ago. And as much as I lamented his loss, I felt the industry was, in effect, going to lose as well. And I feel it did. I was hoping that we would be in a better place as people who have supported Apple all this time. But I don't believe we are. For every aforementioned reason that I'm not going to go over again. So I, I do want to honor the memory of Steve Jobs. And I know many people do. But in my estimation, honoring his memory is adhering to his words, not necessarily buying products from his company. Listening to what he said is honoring him. Understanding sometimes is a bit of a challenge, but being able to accommodate 
and walk that line, that's honoring Steve Jobs' memory. He got it. I get that he got it. I, I'm not saying that I have a Steve Jobs complex. I don't. I wouldn't even call him my mentor. What I'm saying is that he was able to produce something that I didn't know I wanted, that I continued to want, that I looked forward to. And now, it's a product. It's a service. It works-ish. But I don't know if that's necessarily in memory of Steve Jobs. He gave us what we have today, to a large degree, but not necessarily what we actually have today. If it weren't for him, who knows where we'd be? If he were still around, who knows where we'd be? He's not coming back. And I don't think Apple is either, which isn't to say that it's failing, because there are many ways of looking at this. My way of honoring the vision of Steve Jobs may very well lead me down a path of products and services and experiences that Apple has nothing to do with. That's something you may want to reflect on yourself if you do miss the impact that Steve Jobs had on this industry, let alone Apple. So I believe the decisions I'm feeling forced to make are very much reflective upon that. Not asking myself, what would Steve Jobs do? Because quite honestly, uh, only Steve Jobs knew what Steve Jobs would do. You got to do your own thing. Everyone's got to do their own thing. But the more I go and look and, and, and listen and watch the things that Steve Jobs said, the more I feel confident about having to effectively eschew the very things that he brought to the table. I don't feel I have much of a choice. I, I, I don't feel that I would be doing myself any favors for, for continuing to effectively um, accept something that is clearly not up to standards that I thought still existed. That's what I wanted to say on uh, the uh, six-year anniversary of Steve Jobs' death. It's right around the same time that I'm feeling a, a personal change myself in relation to what I choose to use on a regular basis or what I choose to accept and what I choose to reject out of my own principles that may not match your own. Curious to know what you think. I know we've talked a lot about Steve over the past few weeks. What do you think? How do you, if you do, honor Steve Jobs' memory? And be careful about your words. Because even if you didn't respect him, even if you didn't like him, even if he was the absolute worst person to be around in any one of his moods, he still changed this world, and I do believe for the better in relation to personal technology. Not because tech existed, but because he understood design was a core principle. That quality matters. Fit and finish. That it ain't just about the hardware. It's about the hardware singing in harmony with software. I now turn it over to you. I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to do today's live TLDR broadcast. That's over on youtube.com slash LockerGnome. We will likely be bringing up this subject. That's the other YouTube channel. Be sure to set up notifications for both. After that, I'll be recording the podcast, which you can subscribe to. Search for Chris Perillo and any one of your favorite podcast platforms. Or follow me on anchor.fm and then do call-ins during the podcast. I'll be simulcasting the podcast on twitch.tv slash Chris Perillo, again, covering this topic today. Uh, if you caught them, great. If you're only able to watch or listen after the fact, that's fine as well. Tomorrow, I hope to move on to a gadget that Apple doesn't make. I love you. I appreciate you. May the force be with you.